We're back, people, and today we're bringing on film on Jonathan Harris, Miami Dolphins defensive lineman, another guy they added near the vet minimum uh, for that room. And I actually think he has a pretty good chance of making the roster because his skill set is much different from Gallimore's and Benito Jones. While those guys are like your traditional de uh, de or defensive tackles that, you know, play like 0-1 to one or 1-3, to three, like Gallimore, uh, Harris is more of like a 3-4 defensive end type, a little undersized to be playing super on the inside. But I think he had some versatility as he can play as like a big edge at times which is big for the Dolphins because they're kind of you know short on edge depth at the moment especially with Phillips and Chubb out so maybe earlier on in the season you could see him playing some uh reps as a bigger edge which would be interesting also just holding his own at the point of the attack you know he's not like he's a little undersized but he's not the most explosive player he does a really good job with his initial punch he's good with his hand placement gets control at the point of attack wins a lot of his one-on-ones and understands like his gap responsibility in the running game uh, he'll play with some good effort as a pass rusher. Wouldn't expect like too much there uh, in that specific area. He has some good reps where he gets after the quarterback, gets guys to open up. Um, wouldn't say he has like the greatest power or anything. He has a, like his got good like power in his initial punch, his initial hand. But after that, I wouldn't say he creates too much movement down the line. But he does a good job getting laterally, making plays, getting control of his gap situation. Good understanding of what's going on, recognition skills. So. I think he's a smart player that shows versatility, which I think is the biggest thing that this defensive front needs right now. So if he can be a part of that like rotation and playing as you know a three-four DN, playing anywhere from like a three-tech down the line to even the lining on edge on certain snaps, I think that it would be very helpful to the Dolphins. So you know we'll go back look at some of these plays. Does a good job of avoiding double teams as well. He plays with pretty good leverage. Get off the ball, attack the guard, square him up, get close to the center. You know doesn't attack and move you out of the way. Once he gets control of the situation, he extends. He always does a good job with his hand placement. Once he's in complete control here, he gets his eyes to the backfield. Once he sees the running back commit to the inside here, he's able to shed off of it, make that play near the line of scrimmage, slow him down. Uh, under, just good understanding of how to use his length, his hands, all of that to his advantage to really stack and shed in the running game. Plays with a good base, good knee bends, you know, uh, flexes those um, hips, those full extension of them. It's really nice to see him get involved in the running game. This is where... Feel like he can make an impact and he's aligned as like a 2i here which for you know his size because he's like 6'5 but he's like under 300 pounds so he doesn't have you know the bulk to him he did a pretty good job holding up on the interior which is important but also can get out there and get flexed up and uh, beat some tackles which i think he can beat tackles with some power um, more on the inside he kind of you know uses a little more quickness at time to beat guards when he gets in the backfield or just control his point at the point of attack here he does a good job like he's not going to just blow by people as a pass rusher it's usually you know when he does he usually gets control he's just just like a push and pull here um kind of like um makes this guy uh lull him to sleep almost where he just gets engaged with him or learning some play action and then uses a push pull rip underneath starts you know um, bend the quarterback open those hips towards him and he kind of moves stroud off his spot initially here forces him away into another guy and then they get the strip sack so even though he doesn't get you know a stat here, he does a good job of at least penetrating the backfield. But this is like you know one of the few scenarios where he actually you know makes an impact as a pass rusher. Didn't see it too much on the film, but he does understand uh, how to use his hands. He has some moves to at least throw at you and will play with some high effort, which they just need. They need bodies in that room right now because after Sealer, they don't really have guys that like are starter level, but they at least have guys that have some NFL level experience and playing significant snaps. Because last year. Benito Jones and Jonathan Harris played a decent amount of snaps for their team. So getting those guys in there that fill a specific role, a specific need, I think are helpful for the rotation. And you get another guy in there, it's pretty solid. This kind of rep shows how he can almost like set the edge too. Like it's not like, like 42 is setting the edge, but he's like setting like a different edge and just shows like his ability to win his gap. Good leverage, good technique, good base. Everything's there. He used that right hand into the chest. Now he's just in complete control. Um, basically forcing the running back to make a decision there he's like going to run to the back of his own line or kind of you know going to the gap that uh, Harris has complete control of which he you know is now able to shed get off of it this is exactly what you want this gives me you know some good faith that he can also get out there on the edge and set set it as well uh, be that force defender which is pretty good and necessary at least for the Dolphins because right now at the edge position all they really have is Shaq Barrett um, for the start of the season depending on what happens with Phillips and Chubb which is kind of why you know things are up right now like that's why like even in the draft you could see them going after someone like Darius Robinson who can also fill that type of need of being like an edge plus interior type of player 
or just going true edge. But then once your other guys come back, they probably become, you know, more of like a fourth guy um, in the season, which isn't as valuable for your first round rookie. Here, I think it was his only sack last season, which is he's more of just like a disciplined pass rusher when he does. Like he just stays like in his rush lanes. Um, like when the QB would escape, like he would be in a position to like at least, you know, force them to stay inside the pocket, which is a good thing. You know, if you're not going to be like a top tier pass rusher creating a lot of disruption and pressure, at least be disciplined. So if the guy tries to escape, you're in a spot to get there. Knows how to use his length to separate at the last second to get off of it. Find stride before he gets out of there and, you know, get your sack like that. Not the most impressive sack, but still good nonetheless. Another example of him basically being in control of the point of attack this time is a 4-I. Meeting the guard in your position. Really good hand placement again. Good with his length. Basically forklifts him up. In control of your gap. Forces this guy to like cut it back. Once he does that, he tosses him to the side. Able to peel off of it. And then helps slow it down with the rest of his teammates while everyone else gets there. Uh, versus the Dolphins. He actually had a couple of decent plays in this game. This was actually towards the end of the game though. when because <laughs> Surprisingly, Harris actually didn't play that bad in this game. From what I saw from the Dolphins film. Even though... <laughs> Dolphins put up 70, so I wouldn't say it was Harris. He was actually not on the field for a lot of the touchdowns, but this is a pretty good rep uh, beating uh, Kendall Lamb here because he's in control. Point of attack, playing as a three tech. He's trying to cut him off, but just, you know, uh, good recognition skills to feel, um, feel that happening. Use that length to keep himself square. Dip underneath um, the tight end pulling across. Kind of loses his balance and still makes a play. Don't want to see him end up on the ground, but still making a play in the backfield for a tackle for loss, even though you end up losing your balance. A lot of interesting things to see. Uh, his size and build is pretty unique, and I feel like there's a reason they brought in that type of player um, into this type of uh, into this defense because they want a guy that can be a little more versatile, that can also play a little more towards the edges of the defense, not just being a one to a three tech. Because uh, Sealer can kind of do a lot of those things as well. He can play interior, but also get a little bit towards the edge, plays like a five and stuff too. He's had experience, so Sealer's gonna be that main guy, but. Just love watching him in the running game. Just get control at the point of attack. He's really aggressive off the line. Explodes. Good pad level for being, you know, a taller guy. 6'5". Um, really good hand placement. Just is really consistent with his run game technique, which is a big thing. Like when he gets his one on he knows exactly how to use his hands. He knows how his base, everything, bending in the lower half is all pretty good. And once he's able to recognize, identify where the running back's going, he's able to stack and shed pretty well. So those are the things that I really like about his game. Just don't expect him to be like, Super explosive, but you know, just rep after rep, just control at the point of attack. Gets control of his primary gap here. Uh, uses his hands to keep himself clean. Good hand fighting, like lifts him up, forklift. Peek to the inside. See that the running back's trying to sell you in there, but don't get overcommit. You know you have help there. Uh, you can shed once he really commits, and then once he bounces to the outside, stay patient. Boom. Shed from it. Really, really nice work from Harris. Here at Harris, again, lined up like straight up with a tackle, but... Um, interesting rep, they kind of lose him on this one, but when you can have a guy that kind of aligns in like these tweener type of spots, hand of the dirt though, gets engaged with the guard, the tackle, they're kind of, you know, working a loop game, but the uh, DN gets put to the ground on a chip, so the tackle kind of gets caught off guard, but he does a good job still, you know, staying low, getting after the QB, playing with some effort, uh, just when he does get there and get some QB hits, it's more of just like an effort thing, um, and just sticking with it rather than like a super defined like pass rush repertoire and we're winning with like some insane athleticism type thing which is important this is a nice rep where we get to see him work more laterally because a lot of these times he's getting control of the point of attack here he does have the natural leverage advantage but the tackle gets out of the stance really nice and cuts him off he's able to stick with it use his hands reset those hands keep fighting and then get across the face of the tackle rework back to it so really nice work there once you he lost the rep initially but keeps with it uh, really understands how to use his hands. I feel like his hand placement, precision, ability to keep fighting, to rework his leverage is what's really impressive. A uh, pretty impressive play here as well where they, you know, try to use basically like a throw by almost like slingshot him forward out of the play. And he like loses his balance, but kind of able to spin out of it, show some body control and then make that play on the screen. So pretty impressive uh, feat here on space. Uh, to recognize, see what's happening while being pulled out of the way. And that overall right there is a pretty good rep. Also feels pretty comfortable on like loops, stunts, things like that, where he's either, you know, the crash guy here, you could see him loop around. He's a pretty good job timing it, taking good angles, which I think is important because uh, I think, you know, the Ravens are in a lot of twists and stunts and having it, people that are comfortable with it, I think is huge. That's how you can create a lot of, you know, manufactured pressure because Dolphins don't really have those guys right now 
on the defensive front that are going to create a lot of pressures by themselves. Like the guys that they do have are hurt. So um, having, you know, the ability to manufacture some pressure with different looks, but while still bringing four, I think will be really, really important. Uh, so yeah, like the Jonathan Harris pick up some good things to work with. Um, good hustle player, pretty good recognition skills. We'll try to make some plays on space. He's not like the most explosive or athletic guy, but he holds his own in the running game, understands how to use his hands and his length to his advantage, whether things important, and adds a little more positional versatility, I think, across the line than the other guys they added. So if he's a part of the five-man rotation, I'm definitely not mad about it. He was uh, at least a decent role player for the Broncos last season as, you know, a run defender. So if you guys are the video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Yeah. Peace, 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 peace.